Okay, and we are live. Que tal, everybody? Tuesday afternoon, 7.25 p.m. Starting a little bit earlier today, as I uh, thought I'd get it out of the way. Had a bit of free time, so uh, that's why we have the early start. Hope everybody is well today. And uh, plenty of activity already in the chat section. We've got a super chat already from Andrew. Thanks for that, Andrew. We'll put that on the screen. Five pound super chat. Good evening from a stormy southeast London. Hope you and the family are well and coping with the Spanish heat wave. Don't forget to hit the like button, guys. Um, heat wave. Andrew has disappeared. It was very hot at the weekend. Saturday was an incredibly hot day. Haven't experienced a hot day like that for a while. Very humid as well. But um, the hot weather's gone away, at least here in Madrid. Don't know about some other parts of the country. I think it's still hot in Andalusia. But here, about 23 degrees, uh, 23 degrees Celsius today. So a pleasant day uh, for a change because uh, even last week it was a bit hot all week. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and of course, Sunday, the weather changed. Gino coming in from Toronto. Hello, Gino. St. Pete to Madrid. Call of Madrid, exactly right. Uh, St. Pete or David, sorry. Uh, Chris, nice picture. Wish I was there talking about the thumbnail today, which was a beach in Alicante, I think, in Alicante City. Uh, Chris says, Bona tarde from Sant Cugat, Barcelona. Linda coming in from the States. Steve, hello. Ricardo, North London. Yogi coming in again. Grant, Frank from Asturias. Curtis coming in. So plenty of activity already in the chat section. And Ivan coming in. Finally got COVID. Not too bad at the moment. Yeah, everyone's going to get it. Uh, Ivan, it's just a question of time. I had my bout uh, last year and uh, it wasn't too bad. Of course, you never want to get sick and... Uh, Hopefully the symptoms are not too strong, but um, as I said, everybody's going to get COVID at some stage or another. I think it is inevitable, so just have to be prepared for it. Adventure Elliot, hello Adventure Elliot, 30 degrees in Malaga, uh, heat wave. Yeah, the problem with uh, Malaga is the humidity, and when you get those dry winds, um, as uh, I think they're getting there in uh, Malaga at the moment. It can be quite uncomfortable. But anyway, hope it's not too bad. At least you've got the beach down there, Elliot, which is something that you didn't have in Madrid, right? Now let's have a look at the uh, first piece of news today. And uh, good news for um, anybody who wants to become a politician. And it is that the Partido Popular is looking for 33 candidates from for major cities one year before the elections in Bilbao, Barcelona, Valladolid, and Gijón. If Isabel Díaz Ayuso defended anything in her long struggle with Pablo Casado, it was that she needed to lead the PP in Madrid as soon as possible in order to put the local candidacies in order and rearm the party for the 2023 elections. However, the national PP has not begun a similar oper operation to try to take over the large city councils where the brand is not as powerful as it used to be. A year away from the local elections, Feijó is looking for candidates in at least 28 cities and will have to decide on the continuity of five others that are in the wings. So uh, if anybody here in Spain wants to, well, you think you have to be a Spanish citizen, so uh, that's uh, important. But if anybody wants to uh, run for in local elections, sorry, for the Partido Popular, they're looking for people, 33 candidates. So good luck if that is for you. I wouldn't be seen dead running for politics. I wouldn't be able to take the stress. Having a YouTube channel is bad enough with some of the comments that you get. And uh, to be a politician, you either have to be silly or have a very thick skin, I think. But anyway, back into the chat section. Yogi has asked the question, how are interest rates in Spain at the moment? Uh, I think they've gone up recently, Yoga, but they're still quite low apparently. But we'll see if we get increases given the high inflation. We'll wait and see. Uh, Tobias says primaries election day in the States. Big day there, uh, big day there then uh, Tobias there. Uh, people voting in the States um, in the primary elections. Elaine coming in from New Jersey. Uh, let's have a look at the comment here from Elaine. Uh, if I buy you one of your T-shirts, will it buy you a few beers 
Want to wear on my trip to Spain, June, July? Yeah, we'll buy a, f a few beers, um, Elaine. I have that merchandise available. You can see it down below. I've got some new T-shirts up uh, uh, over the last well, over the last few months. I put some new T-shirts up with some new designs and some typical Spanish expressions. For example, "Bete a freir," "Bete a freir churros" is one that I've got, and. Uh, if you want to tell somebody to go and get lost, vete a freir churros. All right, good. Now, let's have a look at what else is going on here. Uh, Martin coming in from Austria. Greetings. And uh, Grant Frank says, no heat wave in Asturias. That's the advantage of living in the north of Spain, uh, Grant Frank, that everything's nice and green and it doesn't get very hot. We're up to 32 likes, so uh, if you're watching the video, one of the 126 people watching the video, hit the like button. It all it all helps. Second piece of news today, overnight stays in Spain increase sixfold in April and prices rise 29.5%, a record since 2002. Overnight stays in Spanish hotel establishments exceeded 25.1 million in April, which is six times... Uh, plus 507%, the figure recorded in the same month of 2021 when there were 4.1 million overnight stays as reported on Tuesday by the National Statistics, Statistics Institute. With regard to prices, the annual rate of hotel price index shot up by 29.5% in April. But uh, by autonomous communities, the highest year-on-year -year rises in hotel prices occurred in Andalusia, 43% up in prices from last year, and Madrid up almost 43% also. So uh, hotel prices up on last year. To be expected, of course, because last year was a, a bad year for hotels. The country was closed for the first few months of last year, I think. Places like the Valencian community, I, I don't think, opened until May or maybe June and uh, it wasn't easy to travel. And of course, hotels had to lower their prices. And that's the reason why they are up 43% uh, in those areas, probably getting back to around those 2019 prices. So cheap last year, very cheap in some places. I remember we got an absolute bargain last year in Benidorm when we, when we went there. We were, um, uh, we were in an apartment overlooking the, the beach and uh, I think there was six of us, I think, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I think six. And uh, we got a very, very good price on that apartment. But uh, this year, impossible to get those deals because they have all been snapped up. Back into the chat. What's going on? Miguel, cooking spaghetti and watching this informative live video. Yeah, I've got one of your comments coming up in a minute, Miguel. So stay tuned for that. I think it's you anyway. So stay tuned for that. Chris says, still hot in Alora, 20 degrees in the shade right now. 29, sorry, he means to say. Hola, buenas tardes a todos. Kevin, hello Kevin, buenas tardes. Buenas tardes, con A, buenas tardes, it's feminine. La tarde. Stu from, uh, hello Stu from Poland. Stan, hello Stan. Um, Elaine. We'll order, we'll order after the show. Thanks for that, Elaine, for showing your support by buying merchandise. Uh, get something for your money there. Uh, a decent T-shirt, I think. Uh, Marta Jove Bigorra. Uh, Betty a freir espargos is the correct expression. No churros. I, th I think you can say both. Um, you can say both, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe where you are, Marta, you can say uh, espargos. But uh, I'm pretty sure that you can say churros as well if not i'll change the t-shirt what else we got going on here malcolm uh good evening and marie just back from portugal next time we'll do portugal and spain can't wait can't wait sorry and height ranger coming in from scottsdale arizona all right now third piece of news today hundreds protest return of spain's ex-king juan carlos ex-king had somebody to say had somebody say the other day that he's called the emeritus king in spanish they call him that but i don't think we use the word emeritus when we talk about kings i think we talk about it when we we're talking about um, we use emeritus when we talk about university professors but not sure about former kings but anyway i stand to be corrected so hundreds of protesters have demonstrated in Mond in madrid today 
against tarnished former King Juan Carlos I, whose visit to Spain after almost two years of self-imposed exile in the UAE has sparked criticism. Holding signs reading justice, the, demonstrated, the demonstrators gathered near the Spanish capital's royal palace. A government spokesperson put their number at 300. Juan Carlos this week returned to Spain for the first time since August 2020 to attend a regatta after investigations into alleged corruption and money laundering were shelved in March. So, uh, the ex-king, former king, emeritus king, if you like, back in Spain. I think he's gone now, but he was back in Spain uh, over the weekend in San Sanchencio. San 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 sorry. And... Um, yesterday in Madrid, where he had a sit-down with his son, the current king, and apparently his son was uh, not too happy with the way that Juan Carlos has been carrying on for the last two years and all of the problems that he's managed to get himself into by not paying taxes, not declaring that income, being sued by uh, former girlfriends and uh, things like that. And, of course, the spotlight has been on him constantly uh, since he's been living in Abu Dhabi. And uh, he managed to sort it out with the tax department. He paid the fines, got them off got uh, them off his back and uh, got the Swiss prosecutors off his back as well for uh, money that he had in banks there, apparently. And uh, he came back to Spain and um, now he's gone again. So <laughs> when he'll be back, who knows? But uh, I'm not sure whether... Uh, everybody was glad to see him, as we saw there. Some 300 protesters holding Republican flags, uh, obviously still waiting for Spain to, rep to become a republic again, like it was before the Civil War back in the 1930s. Still holding on to that hope. But uh, every time something like uh, what happened with the former king happens, Spain edges a little bit closer, maybe, towards a republic. Who knows? Who knows? royal families, uh, and now in Australia with the uh, new Labour leader that we have down there, who's also a staunch Republican. Uh, we'll wait and see what happens. But anyway, now, what's going on here? Anita Moore, hi, from Sos del Rey, Sos del Rey Catolico. We left Sunny Peniscula, and are now in the Cooler North. Yeah, the Cooler North, always good, uh, Anita, on the way to Santander and back to England. Marie is coming in from Long Island. Douglas coming in from Edinburgh, Scotland. Hello, Douglas. Raker from Toronto. Sherbet Dip in the comments again, uh, asking me if I'm off to Benidorm. Oh, so he's off to Benidorm in uh, June. Everything is more or less back to normal. That is true, Sherbet Dip. Hope you enjoy your time there. Jao. Ramos says, Boa tarde, Boa tarde, Jao. Uh, Libby Tucker, Lacey, plenty of uh, action in the chop section, uh, chat section, sorry, not chop, <laughs> chop section. Il Bazo's coming in from Namibia, and uh, Dave Dean's also coming in from Scotland. Hello, Dave, hope everything is well. Now, um, Somebody also saying that the correct expression is Betia Freid Esparago. So maybe I've got that wrong, but uh, I did hear it recently, so that's why I included it. But anyway, I always stand to be corrected. Now, where are the richest and poorest towns in Spain? Pozuelo de Alarcón in Madrid has the highest income and lowest unemployment in the country, according to a new report published by the National Institute of Statistics which now shows a clear division between living conditions in the north and south of Spain. The statistics refer to towns with more than 20,000 inhabitants, and at the other end of the scale are Nija, Almeria, with an average income of 7,097 euros, Bicard, Almeria, with 7,634, and Palacios y Villafranca in Sevilla, with 8,054 euros, the average income. These are all in the in the same place as last year. So Pothuelo, I think the average in Pothuelo was 26,000 euros per annum. And we can see the difference between places down there in Almeria, especially, and Seville. And if we have a look at a map, I'll just put a map on the screen here, and we can see 
the difference between the north. So we've got the higher incomes here, 26,000 euros being the highest, and that was Pozuelo, which is, of course, on the outskirts of Madrid, uh, northwest Madrid. Um, and uh, the areas here, Murcia, lots of red in Murcia, where they've got the lower incomes around the 7,000, 8,000 euro mark. Murcia, Andalusia being the two areas where we see lots of places with low incomes. And uh, Madrid, high income, Catalonia, Barcelona, high income, Cantab or the Basque country we can see has got quite high incomes there. Uh, Asturias has a few places, Galicia has a few places, obviously the place where Inditex comes from, Artesha I think is the name of that city, uh, town, high income, and uh, Baidolith I think they're in Castilla y Leon. But uh, yeah, big difference, huge differences between incomes in uh, the north and the south of Spain. And uh, these, as we saw, are uh, the same as last year. So nothing has improved since then. But uh, yeah, uh, places like Nija, I think, which is close to where I went uh, recently in Almeria. It's um, not far from San Jose, I believe. And of course, it's all agriculture there and people uh, obviously not making a lot of money now what else we got going on marta love listening to, love listening to your daily reports you're doing a good job for the english speaking community glad you embraced spanish way of living thank you very much marta for that chris again em uh, emeritus having retired but uh, allowed to retain a title as an honor so pointing that one out there chris thanks for that what else we got going on? We've got uh, Andrea in Hornchurch, Essex, back in Spain next week. Finally made it to a live stream. Thanks for that, uh, uh, Andre, Andre, Andrea. Sorry, uh, City fan coming in and uh, plenty of activity coming in in the chat section. Kevin says here, we'll get there with the Spanish. Thanks for the correction. Hoping to move the family to Halom. Benissa area by 2024. So not sure what happened there with the correction, uh, Kevin. But maybe oh, that sorry, that was the Buenas Tardes. That's right. So uh, Buenas Tardes, Buenos Dias, Buenas Tardes, Buenas Noches. So the only one that has an O is in the morning, Buenos Dias, because Dia, although it finishes with an A, is masculine buenos dias el dia all right good now what else we got going on here we saw that one first comment of the day keith the problem is lack of money in the pay packet not a shortage of workers not in capital letters there people are tired and sick to death of working for poor wages absolutely people are sick and tired of working for poor weight poor wages not only here in Spain, but I imagine in every country in the world, Keith, people are sick and tired of working for poor wages. But uh, the trend seems to be that. Here in Spain, for example, ever since we had that correction back in after the last financial crisis, when was it? Back in 2008, 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, we had that internal devaluation. A lot of people's salaries were frozen for a while, civil servant salaries were frozen. They lost their extra pay as well. And uh, a lot of people had their salaries frozen by their companies as we had that, as I said, internal devaluation in order to make Spain more competitive. And that mean, meant that uh, salaries, of course, uh, stayed the same or went down for a lot of uh, people. And um, it's, it is it is what it is, unfortunately. And uh, people just don't want to work for low salaries and long hours. And we can see in this next comment here, this one here from uh, Ellie, possible and, re possible and reasonable reason why a lot of people reject jobs here in Spain. Many jobs have working hours that are too long, too many hours with a useless gap in between in which you have lunch and then do nothing and waste time for two or three hours. Uh, you do not really rest. Working hours, I think, should be uh, no more than seven hours per day, and of course, with two days off a week. There really should be laws to make sure there is no labor slavery. Yeah, absolutely there should be. That's also one of the things. So you've got low salaries in certain sectors, primarily the uh, hospitality sector where people are working in bars, restaurants, hotels, and things like that. 
long hours uh, with low salaries. And long hours in general seem to be a problem for a lot of people here. I remember working, uh, giving English classes in companies here, and people in those companies were working really long hours, you know, starting at 8.30 in the morning, sometimes 9, and working through to 7.30, 8 p.m. So a long working day, of course, they're getting compensated for their time a lot more than some other people, but I've seen people working shifts in bars and restaurants where they do the lunchtime shift, have a couple of hours off, and then have to come back for the evening shift as well. So long days, and a characteristic of a lot of uh, uh, places here, especially cafeterias and things like that, is they open in the morning, and they're open until sometimes one, uh, one o'clock in the, on, in the morning. So they're open really, really long hours. And of course, finding staff to work those hours is not easy. I'm not saying that they have to work you know, 12, 13 hour days, but I'm sure some people do. And the problem for a lot of uh, uh, owners of these places is the trust issue uh, of having people working when the boss is not there uh, in case people steal and things like that. So that's also an issue, but it is a serious problem. And as we saw, there are lots of jobs going begging in the hospitality industry and also in the IT sector as well because people just don't have the skills to work in that sector unfortunately, and uh, people have to come in from other countries to work in IT. As we know, in uh, Malaga has a vibrant IT scene, but uh, somebody wrote me an email once telling me that the majority of people are Northern Europeans working in that sector, so it doesn't make sense. But anyway, we've got Michael coming in from Barcelona. Hello, Michael. Um, what else we got going on here? We've got uh, John... Let's have a look what's going on here. Um, plenty of action in the chat section. It was difficult to, to, to uh, take certain chats out. Um, Miguel says, tourist places, low wages. We need to, need to industrialize the South. Yeah, good luck with that, industrializing the South. I think the uh, biggest company in Seville was... Avengoa, and uh, I don't know whether they're still going or not because they ran into financial problems. So I don't know whether that's a solution to industrialize the South, Miguel, because tourism has been the uh, model that they have chosen down there. So we'll see. What else have we got going on here? We've got um, Grant says, it is aspar asparagus, according to my wife, who's from Madrid. So all right, there we go. It is asparagus. But uh, again, I did hear somebody say, Churros, but anyway, I'm not going to go on for that too much longer. Uh, Chris is heading off to Fuengirola in four days. She can't wait. That's good to see. And uh, we've got a super sticker from Dave. Let's um, uh, put it on the screen here. Uh, pair character lifting, some weights, saying keep it up. All right, thank you very much for that. I think that's the super sticker that he chose. I can't see the sticker, so I think they've uh, translated it. But uh, thank you very much for the super sticker, Dave. We're up to 240 viewers, 95 likes. So we'll try and get that uh, like count over the 100. So hit that like button if you can, if, you've, if you can find it, that is. Next uh, comment is this one here, Gary uh, from Gary. Hi, Stu. I'm thinking of retiring to Dolores Alicante next year. I'll have about 80 thousand euro in savings and 2100 euro pension a month my rent will be about 500 do you think this will be sufficient thanks ps love your videos uh yeah gary i think it will be enough to live reasonably well down there in alicante not sure exactly where that town is that you're talking about there but it doesn't sound like a big town i would have heard of it otherwise so the cost of living is obviously going to be cheaper 500 euros a month for rent, that's going to leave you with around uh, 1,600 euros out of your pension, which I think is going to be enough, to be honest. The, you should be able to cover your costs and have money to go out and enjoy your life down there. And you've got a bit of uh, uh, some money saved so to fall back on if needed. So I think that's enough, to be honest. But uh, anybody in the chat section uh, thinks otherwise, please let me know um, and uh, let... I'll just have a look at that uh, chat there. Gary, let Gary know if that is going to be sufficient to live down there in Alicante. I think it would be. 
because you're not living in a big city like uh, Madrid. But we saw before what a lot of income, a lot of a lot of homes in those areas down there in Murcia and the Lucia. The average is seven or eight thousand euros. So if you're you know on two thousand one hundred a month, you're well above that. So you should be okay. You should be okay, Gary. All right, what else we got going on? Um, all right. Uh, that working method suits many people. They call it split shifts in Spain. Turno partido. It helps young families as they can look after their kids. That could be right. Thanks for that, uh, City fan. The input. What else we got going on here? Uh, Mick coming in from Moreira. Hello, Mick. Uh, Bucket 7R says, When I first went to Lanzarote, I did a cleaning job for six months. It was four euros an hour. Yeah, well, that wouldn't get you far nowadays. Uh, bucket, four euros an hour. I'll give you the tip. That would not get you far. Um, Kyle says, odd that stickers don't show up on your end. They appear just fine in the chat log here. That's because I'm not using the YouTube platform. I use a, a third-party platform to put these videos out. And obviously, they don't have the, um, the uh, technology yet to show those stickers unfortunately Kyle but if I went to the YouTube page I would be able to see them but there's a delay there so I can't do the video live from that page and I prefer this platform here because everything works very very well except for the super stickers but anyway what else we got going on Michael says do you think that monkey pox will shut Spain down again uh, no, Michael, I don't think that mo uh, that monkeypox will shut Spain down. I don't think that. The health experts are saying that uh, uh, it's not going to be anything like COVID. But uh, it is, of course, making headlines at the moment because it is something... Uh, well, I don't know whether it's new because it's been around for a while, but it, it's new recently that people have uh, had to have 30 or 40 cases or however many cases there are in Spain at the moment. And it's spreading around the world. But uh, to answer the question, no, I don't think that Spain will be shut down because of monkeypox. But anyway, uh, although you never know nowadays, but uh, I don't think it will. All right, good. Uh, Ivan says, uh, no lockdown ever again. Hopefully that'll be the case, uh, Ivan. No lockdown ever again, but you never know. And uh, Michael says that uh, 1600 is a good amount, especially if you cook at home. Um, that's true, Michael. But uh, nowadays, there are plenty of places around the place where you can get cheap food. They call them uh, cocina casera. They're like little shops that have popped up around the place and they have somebody cooking the traditional Spanish menu, their Lear dishes at a cheaper price. You can normally pick them up for around uh, 455 euros. So quite cheap to eat out as well for five euros eating out every day. Maybe a little bit more, 550 with a drink or something like that, but well priced. And that that's here where I live in Madrid. So probably probably even cheaper in places like Alicante. But anyway, all right, good. Now back into the comments. One here from Gwyneth concerning cooking. My husband loves chorizo. So any recipes containing this would be great, please. Yeah, this was uh, in regard to a comment that somebody left yesterday that said they would like to see me doing a few cooking videos. Um, I don't know whether I'd be up for that because I'm not the best cook in the world. I can, I can of course, get some advice from uh, different people who are expert cooks and maybe copy their recipes. But uh, when it comes to the typical guisos, as they call them here, the ones that have chorizo, so, for example, fabada would have chorizo in it. Um, cocido, I think, has chorizo. Um, cocido madrileño, I think, has chorizo. A lot of those, what they call the uh, callos, has chorizo. We'll see callos in a minute. A lot of the traditional uh, guisos have uh, uh, morcilla and chorizo in them. Uh, otherwise, chorizo is pretty much just eaten on its own. For example, at a barbecue, you might have chorizo on the barbecue. It's also quite popular as like a, a cold meat in a sandwich or a roll. Uh, maybe if you go out and have tapas, you might order a cup of some um, chorizo a la sidra. But uh, in the Spanish dishes, uh, migas, I think, might have a bit of chorizo in it as well. But 
uh, I think chorizo is mainly eaten on its own, I think. Except, as I said, for those uh, traditional guisos or like casserole dishes like the cocidos and things like that, favada and things like that, stews where they put all these different ingredients in and slow cook them. That's when you get chorizo in quite a few meals. So I could look into doing, I could look into doing something like that. And uh, final comment here from Miguel, who's also in the chat section. Hi, Stu, what's your opinion about Spanish classic dishes like migas or callos? Uh, when it comes to callos, um, the Madrid callos, I eat them every now and again. I'm not going to order them every time I go to a restaurant, but some people like them. I find that a little bit too rich, a lot of uh, paprika and the chorizo and the morcilla and things like that. And of course, tripe on its own can be a little bit uh, heavy. In Portugal, they do a nice tripe dish with beans, uh, which I like. Um, uh, I can't remember. I'm sure that somebody who speaks Portuguese in the comment section will let me know, but I can't remember what, how, what they call caios or tripe in Portuguese. I think it's dobrada or something like that, maybe. Dobrada. Uh, I prefer that. It seems a little bit um, not, not as heavy for me. But um, again, I'm not going to be eating them every day. And the other thing that you mentioned there, Miguel, is the uh, migas. Um, I haven't really had migas too many times except when I've been... Uh, in Extremadura, I think I had them once. Castilla-La Mancha, I think we had them when we went to Ciudad Real. Maybe in Andalusia, I had them once as well. Not bad, but again, not going to be eating them every day. But some of those classic dishes I like. Some of them I'll eat, but I'm not huge fans because I find that I find a little bit too heavy. Some of those classic dishes there, Miguel, to answer your question. A little bit too heavy to get through the rest of the day. So if I have a big lunch, the only thing I, I feel like doing is having a sleep afterwards, and sometimes that's not possible. So I try to avoid those uh, big, heavy meals. Uh, lentils is also something where the, the Spanish lentils, you'll find uh, chorizo a lot of times in that, morcilla as well. Uh, so, um, yeah. I like them, but again, I'm not going to be ordering them every time I go out, Miguel, just because they're a bit a bit too heavy, a bit too heavy. All right, Blind Spots Traveller asked the question, do you know if rugby is a growing sport in Spain? Um, I don't know whether it's a growing sport, uh, Blind Spots. It's fairly established in certain sectors, for example, universities. In uh, Madrid, there's a team in Alcobendas. There's also a university team as well. I think in Seville, there's a team. There's different teams around the place. Don't know whether it's growing as a sport. I know that Spain did qualify for the World Cup this year in the last one, but of course they had their qualification taken away because they put a player in who was not of Spanish nationality. So I'm sure that if they had have made those two World Cups, the sport would have grown more. But unfortunately, that was not the case. So I don't really know whether it's growing or not. And again, people that play at university, uh, military, tend to play rugby as well. But for example, when it comes to uh, schools, no, I haven't don't, don't see many schools playing rugby. It's all uh, football, 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 or as we say in Australia, soccer, soccer, soccer. That's the dominant sport here. And uh, everything else is just uh, a minority sport, basically. But uh, as I said, if uh, Spain manages to qualify for the next Rugby World Cup, which uh, could be possible if they don't put any uh, non-Spaniards into the team, then it could grow when they get a little bit more publicity. But seeing it even on TV is difficult. You have to go to the uh, national sports station to be able to watch it and uh, doesn't receive a lot of coverage. The All Blacks played the other day against Spain, I think, here in Madrid, and uh, there was a little bit of publicity, but uh, but not a lot. And it would be interesting to see what the crowd was to that game, but very, only for the staunch supporters, I believe. But again, I could be wrong. Now we're going to have to uh, wrap it up in a minute. Uh, thank you very much for your participation in the chat section. Sorry that I couldn't go through every chat section here. Dave says... As far as chorizo is concerned, he prefers it on his own, on its own, sorry, a good quality Iberico, delicious. 
quite nice uh, Dave as you mentioned if you get the Iberico version there's also a couple of other versions of chorizo which are not too bad if you get them from the supermarket cold and whack them in a sandwich and things like that it can be quite tasty but again when it comes to cooking it's a different type of chorizo I think it's uh, yeah, but uh, again, uh, in those typical classic Spanish dishes, cocidos and things like that, favada, that's where you find the cocido. All right, good. Going to start to wrap the video up. We've been going for 35 minutes, up to 142 likes, 237 people watching. Thank you very much for your participation today. Thank you very much for everybody to everybody who participated in the chat section. And again, sorry I couldn't get through every chat there. But uh, I'll be back tomorrow with a normal video. So uh, see you then. Hasta luego.